Today, I would like to demonstrate the capabilities of Zell Craftworks chip cytometry platform in regard to high-quality data and highly multiplexed tissue cytometry. As a first data set, I've chosen a 0.1 by 0.5 centimeter large mouse spleen section. Mouse spleen is one of the most challenging sample types in regard to accurate single cell analysis because they contain densely packed small cells. Segmenting these cells is a real challenge. You can see this section now as an overview showing the nice microarchitecture of the spleen and the B cell zone and the T cell zone, and you can readily zoom in to the single cell level and even to subcellular resolution. One pixel in this system is 500 nanometers of resolution. I've chosen, out of the many markers we've screened, these four markers, CD3, CD8, NK1.1 for NK cells, and B220 for B cells to show you the different regions of the spleen. What you can see is that the B cell zones are in red and some CD4 T cells are interspersed here. And the NK cells in yellow are here. And the CD8 cells in blue are closer to the B cell zones, as you can see here. So, a nice microarchitecture. The dynamic range of the biomarker values that you can see here is 4.8 billion shades per color. Because our eyes can only see 50 shades for each color, the images you see here are eye-friendly dynamic compressed images, but behind are the raw data with eight decades of dynamic range. Closing this overview, I'm coming to one of these tiles where you can see single cells. And then, based on these high dynamic range images that we are recording, we can use artificial intelligence-based single cell recognition. Here you can see how the single cells are separated from each other. Each single cell is one object, and for each single cell the values are calculated. So you have a real single cell flow-like data out of these tissue sections, and you can use these data for further downstream processing. Like flow cytometry, you can just go and do 2D plots. Just drag and drop the markers, and you can nicely see the separation here of the CD8 T cells. You can gate on these CD8 cells, just like in flow cytometry. Just choose an informative color. Let's take red. And then you have a gate of the CD8 cells, and you can go back with this gate and display only this gate of CD8 cells, which are here, 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 and here. So you have a direct link between your list mode flow cytometry data and the image data. And you can go further downstream and do more sophisticated data analysis based on our server like the generation of heat maps. As a second sample, I've chosen skin biopsy to demonstrate an additional feature of our technology, which is autofluorescence correction. Our images correct themselves for autofluorescence. Any one of these colors here is a marker, and in gray is autofluorescence. As a result, each marker only has information from staining and not from color coming in from autofluorescence. The human skin biopsy here is also nice because you can see a lot of anatomic features which are supported by this autofluorescence which I display here in gray. We analyzed 32 markers on this single sample as you can see here, and I have chosen informative ones that show you both the local cells, like the epithelial cells, and the cells that are below the epithelium, and also immune cells, like CD3 cells that are very scarce, but you can readily find them here and there. And also interesting, there are CD25 positive cells in the hair follicular. So you have very high resolution, you can go into details, and you have an unlimited number of markers along with autofluorescence subtraction and high dynamic range imaging, giving you broader opportunities to investigate your tissue sample.